It's time for Rick Bentley's TV Beat television program. Stay tuned for former Fresno Bee media and entertainment writer Rick Bentley as he brings the TV Beat column to television with the latest news of what's happening in local radio, television, and more. And now, here's Rick Bentley. Well, welcome to another edition of TV Beat with Rick Bentley. It's a show designed to keep you updated on what's going on in local television and radio. Hope you're having a good summer of television viewing. It won't be long until the new fall TV season launches and there'll be lots and lots of new shows for you to watch. Now, since my last show, I've, I've spent 10 days in Los Angeles attending the Television Critics Association's summer tour. Now, twice a year, those of us who watch TV for a living get together to see upcoming programming and do interviews with casts of new shows. The summer tour is always devoted to the fall season. Now, I can't really talk about the new shows yet, but I will tell you that of the new programs I've seen, one of the new series I expected to launch with a big bang ended up being nothing more than a weak whisper. Also, since we last talked, the uh, Emmy nominations were announced, and HBO was a, a big winner, leading the way with 111 nods, followed by the streaming service of Netflix with 91 was happy to see that The Handmaid's Tale, a series I suggested you watch, was nominated for 13 Emmys. Now the top network was NBC in third place with 64. The Emmy Awards will be handed out in September. All right, it's time for a break. As always, I want you to make sure you have a pencil and a paper handy because at the end of the show or even during the show, I'm going to give you some important information that you're going to want to write down. Now, after the break, I'm going to tell you my idea for a new local TV channel. I'll be right back. Hey, welcome to Deli Delicious. What can I get you? Grilled chicken Caesar salad. Number 41. You know I love that steak and jack. Everything on that? The works. Ooh, it's so hard to choose. Let me get the 35, the 41, and the 24. Absolutely. Number 44, chipotle chicken. Turkey, avocado, and sprouts. Number 45, barbecue tri-tip. I love the bread. The meat. The crisp lettuce. Lots of avocado. Everything. Fresh ingredients just taste better at Deli Delicious. Well, I'm going to the beach where I belong. It's Pepsi Night. Wednesday and Thursday nights after 5. Bring a Pepsi can and get unlimited rides for just $14.95. Including new rides like Shockwave. Yay! And Typhoon. It's after five. Wednesday and Thursday night. $14.95, unlimited ride. That's so cool. At the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, in the warm California sun. Boardwalk! Hello, welcome to Alberto's restaurant. Come on in. At Alberto's, you will have a new experience at great Italian dining. We have fantastic pasta dishes like fettuccine alfredo and eggplant parmesan. And you have to come in and try the chicken marsala and the calamari con limone. I take great pride in everything I prepare, and I know you will love it. And what's dinner without a little wine? At Alberto's, we have a great selection of wines to go with your dinner. Alberto's Restaurante in Pacific Road. Come and see us tonight. Salute. You know us, we're the Fresno Breakfast House, a great place for breakfast or lunch. Did you know we have a beautiful banquet facility? The Grand Banquet Room, adjacent to the Fresno Breakfast House. It's one of Fresno's newest event venues. Our location makes the perfect event center for bridal and baby showers, birthday parties, award ceremonies, family reunions, holiday parties, and conferences. Our lovely venue includes AV equipment and can host up to 130 guests. We combine casual elegance with unbeatable values. Call the Grand Banquet Room for your next experience occasion. Well, welcome back to TV Beat with Rick Bentley. Now, before I introduce this week's guest, I, uh, I want to run an idea past you. As I told you in the last show, I've dropped my cable and I now watch TV via an antenna. It's supplemented by a Netflix and Hulu account. That means I've seen all of the local over-the-air TV stations. And while there are places to watch sports, it seems like someone could really tap into local interests with an all-local sports channel. Now, the programming would include local high school sports, Fresno State, Fresno City, and Pacific. It could also feature programming about, oh, let's say, the Grizzlies and, and the Fuego. It's also an area that's big in boxing and auto racing, so local events could be broadcast. What I would do is blend game coverage and special shows 
with a local sports talk radio channel such as uh, 940 ESPN or Fox Sports AM 1340. When there's no local game to air live or repeat, the station could switch over to the radio broadcast, or the TV station could just air sports podcasts done locally. Look, there are plenty of locals who could host a local call-in program to talk about sports. Uh, these kind of shows could fill up hours. Uh, it would take an investment, which means this won't be happening anytime soon, at least. But fortunately, Fresno sports fans do have several places on the radio and on TV to turn to to get immediate sports news. And I know how important that is for those of you who complain when the Fresno Bee went to such early deadlines that no sporting events happening after dinner was in the next day's paper. Now, when it comes to TV, ABC 30 leads the way with a team taught by my guest tonight. Tommy Tran joined the ABC 30 Action News team in March of 2010 as a reporter, but in October of 2012, he was promoted to sports director at KFSN. Uh, Tran began his career at KGO TV in San Francisco, where he interned in the sports department. He was there for about a year. Now, that makes sense, as he was born and raised in the, in the Bay Area, and he graduated from San Jose State. So, after a stint in Yuma, Arizona, he came to Fresno. I want to thank Tommy for being my guest tonight. Here's Tommy Tran. Well, thanks, Tommy, for being my guest tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's it's August now. We're heading toward a busy, busy time for you, I know. But before we get to that, I want to talk a little bit about you. Now, did you grow up? Were you, have, have you been a sports fan all your life? Sports fan, yes. Uh, ever since I was a, a child, sports has always been a part of my life, and I've enjoyed it. I actually got into it. My grandfather was a big sports fan, and so that's how I got into it now. Um, I didn't always want to be a sports reporter or anchor at a young age. I know some people say I always wanted to grow up to be right. on ESPN or, or something like that. I actually did not know what I wanted to do until I was um, in junior college. I, and it took me a little while to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. So uh, it took me longer than most through the junior college system. But once I took a, an elective, which ended up being a TV class, mm. did very well. The instructor said, hey, this is something maybe you should... Um, look into and I did and I was focused and, and motivated and I did very well and then got enough credits to transfer to San Jose State and then uh, that worked out well for me and, and obviously the rest is history. So you were just taking general classes at that time or had you thought about a journalism career or? No, not at all. I, I was, to be honest, struggling through my GE trying to figure out what, you know, I didn't, wasn't very into science and, and math and, and anything else. One, probably the only class that I really did all right with speech class, and mm -hmm. I and I enjoyed that very much. But even then, it wasn't enough to kind of really get into to what I wanted to do as a major, and, and, and didn't know what I wanted to have when I graduated until I took that elective class. And but ever since then, I've had I've had a focus and kind of a, a, a real good desire to, to go through with it. And fortunately for me, it's worked out. Yeah. Now, uh, working in, in journalism, whether it be TV, print, or whatever, it, there's that constant deadline to, to worry with, and especially with TV, there's that immediacy that you need to do and everything like that. Have you always been a person that sort of thrived on pressure and, and dealing with that sort of thing? I didn't before. <laughs> 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 no, until I found something, you know, that I, that I was good at and that I enjoyed. I, I do love, you know, especially uh, in this kind of medium in, in TV, it's I'm offering something tangible every day. I have a deadline. I have to. I have to put something together. I have to present it to to our audience. And so I do um, enjoy that part of it. And there are going to be more chaotic days than most. Um, but at the end of the day, like you said, I do thrive on it. I enjoy that pressure. And then when you're able to kind of deliver, it certainly feels good. So you said you, you know, sort of a family heritage of interested in sports. Uh, do you remain a fan of certain teams or because of your job do you find you have to sort of put that in your back pocket because you know it, right. there's no cheering in the press sure box. I actually have a I'm actually glad because obviously living here in the Central Valley for instance in baseball there are a majority of giant fans mm. in terms of a fan base but there's a good amount of number of Dodger fans right. and so I will actually get emails or calls saying that I am a Dodger lover, <laughs> um, which is not the case. And yeah. so I feel good about that because that means I'm presenting it exactly. as, as objectively as I can. I try to call the moment. I try to call if it's a newsworthy story, I think, that needs to be presented. So, um, you know, I won't say, well, you know, the, the Giants lost in a way and then the Dodgers didn't win this way, that kind of thing. So I try to stay as neutral as possible. And, and uh, 
you know, I think it's worked out so far. Yeah, it's yeah, it's great. And again, if you if you got people that's complaining one way or the other right. or both ways, then yeah. you know you're doing it right because mm -hmm. you're not going to please everybody all the time. I get that exactly. So, but now, because of your interest and because of what you do, do you have to spend all your free time watching sports, reading sports? I mean, can you ever get away from? I mean, when you go on vacation, do you just say, "I don't want to see anybody playing basketball or anything like that"? I've gotten a little bit better as I've gotten older, but when I was uh, younger and just out of school and in my first television market and even the first few years here, it was 24-7. Um, and now when I take some vacation, I unplug, at least through social media, uh, I will check you know, my phone or try to watch some TV to try to maybe catch up on the day's news, yeah. the day's sports. But that constant checking my phone uh, every so often is something... You know, and my girlfriend tells me this too when I take time off to, to spend a little more time with her. So it's, I try to get that done. And you still get that question at, at parties? Hey, I want your job. Can I have your job? Oh yeah. Or they come and you go to like I'll go to a high school or I'll go to Fresno State and uh, hey man, you got the best job and I would love to do what you do and and uh, I could do that for a living. That'd be kind of cool. So um, every day I'm reminded that it's a pretty good gig. All right, well, we want to talk about what's coming up that's going to really consume a lot of your life. We've got to take a break real quick. We'll be back in just a moment. Come experience Lin's Fusion, where the flavors of Asia come together. Lunch or dinner, Lin's offers an endless buffet, including sushi, dim sum, vegetarian, teppanyaki, all freshly prepared with warm family hospitality. Complete your meal with one of 14 flavors of exotic tea prepared at your table. Lin's Fusion, where the flavors of Asia come together seven days a week. 5155 North Blackstone in Fresno. Visit us on the web at linsfusion.com. Well, I'm going to the beach where I belong. It's Retro Nights. And Monday and Tuesday nights after 5. All rides are just $1.50, including hot new rides like Shockwave. I'm still spinning. And Typhoon. Whoa. Upside down. And it's not just rides, there's old school prices throughout the park. It's Retro Nights. Monday and Tuesday, dollar fifty rides after five. Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk in the warm California sun. Boardwalk! Richards, a valley dining tradition, serving great food since 1969, including Richards' famous deluxe dinner for two. Multiple choices at a fixed price. Great tasting steaks or seafood. Richard's Deluxe Dinner for Two, a favorite. It even includes wine. A Central Valley dining tradition on historic Belmont off 180. Follow our neon sign to Richard's where you'll find something special and something good right on the menu. This summer, the choice is easy. Pick fun at Wildwater Adventure Park. There are so many ways to splash away the summer in our 52 cool shady acres, full of rides, slides, and awesome adventures for everyone. You can score with every ride on Kaleida Slide. It's part water slide, part video game, and totally cool. So come run the rapids, ride the slides, or play all day in Adventure Bay. Whatever you choose, Wildwater Adventures has a full day of fun for everyone. The coolest choice this summer is Wildwater Adventure Park in Clovis. We're back, and I'm talking to Tommy Tran from ABC 30, and we're uh, the reason he's here as my guest tonight is because, uh, as many of you know, any of you who are sports fan know, this is going to be a start of a big, big, busy time for anybody who handles and covers sports. You're getting ready to head into the football season, and what really amazes me when I watch what you guys do is I, I know you cover high school and college and pros and all that but it's the high school coverage that really amazes me because I think you, you said early you told me earlier that it's more than a hundred schools you have to keep an eye on mm -hmm. just to do the job how do you is it like going to war every Friday night I mean you've got so many so many soldiers you can sit out on and battles how does it work what's the logistics of it yeah you there's more than 100 schools in our viewing area, and that includes uh, some schools in Merced as well. And so on any given night, as you mentioned, weekly, there are anywhere between 80 to 100 schools that are playing either each other or even inviting some other schools to come play them when it's earlier in the year. It's, mm. it's impossible to get everywhere. Even if you know our show is about 15 minutes, if we had 30 or even an hour-long show, we couldn't get everywhere. So when I switched from news to sports five years ago right. part of what I told my my news director was I was always telling him that I think when you 
put more energy and more effort and add context to certain high school games, I feel like we can do more with less. And what I mean mm. by that is we actually, in our time frame, and, and the other stations in terms of how much time they have are pretty comparable, right. but they actually, some of them cover more games than we do, and, right. and I don't have any problem with that. We don't cover as many games, but I feel like we cover them better. Mm -hmm. I feel like we, we, we're, we're at these games, we're talking to coaches before the game to see who's the next up and coming player, or who's a player who's under the radar, and then we present that um, at night for our, our weekly reports on Friday. Another thing that I think that what we do differently too is that we have a, a two person show mm -hmm. where uh, my colleague Chris Alvarez, who's the weekend sports anchor, we're in the same studio at the same time, and there's something about the camaraderie that we have and that we can bounce things off of each right. other. You know, maybe this particular week I'm talking about a team and a player that he saw last week and mm -hmm. that's something we can have fun with. And so I think that separates it because some people will tell us and they'll tell us often that, boy, you guys look like you're having a lot of fun and we are. Yeah. Um, and so again, we're not covering as many games but we do things in the mornings, for instance, on AM Live and our newscast for years, mm -hmm. more than a decade, 15 plus, We've done the uh, Friday morning football segment right. with the schools, and we incorporate that in our show. That has since been copied from some of the other yeah. stations, and, and they're trying to, which is great, by the way. You know, yeah, I mean, sure. more coverage for, for all the schools is right. great, but it works for us, and that's something that has worked. Um, and then that's transferred and translated into other things for the night show as well. Yeah. Well, tell me, but talk about, does this planning process start on Monday? Like, okay, these are the, this is the list of games we have this week. Yeah. Or are you looking a month ahead? Not that far ahead. It's a weekly deal. Uh -huh. um, I check every Monday, and so the first month of the season, the, the, the schools are not playing each other. They're, they're either playing some schools from the Central Coast, right. they're playing some schools from Sacramento area and L.A. and so forth. So the first month for me when I'm sort of deciding uh, editorially where, to, where our resources are going to go, I'm a little bit more okay with trying to get schools that maybe are not traditional powers or for really down the road we may not get to because they may not be very good so right. I try to I try to get some of the smaller schools and things like that um, together and then what happens is every week then I start as we get into October which is sort of the meat of the schedule then I start looking at storylines the good teams the good players and then I do matchups that potential way. playoff teams. potential that? playoff teams okay. because at the end of the day again it goes back to the whole we cover less but we give you more right that we try to um, that helps a little bit engaging which schools to cover that also means and that's a big thing that I think that we do well is we're not always Fresno or Clovis centric I love right. the smaller schools oftentimes the rural areas really support their teams more so if their teams are good that year I will not ignore them and I will send some of our resources to go there one more thing that we do too, and we've done this for uh, three or four years, is the um, the polls that we have. We have an online poll that mm -hmm. has three games that voters get to choose, so it's a very democratic process. We put up three games, and oftentimes it's a smaller school against a bigger school, and I can tell you about eight out of ten times the smaller school will win. So then we go yeah. out there, we'll cover their game, and they've really enjoyed it, and it's worked out well for us. Yeah, but you're, it's always been hard to do. I mean, it's covering sports is always a, a massive job yeah but in this day and age with the social media where mm -hmm. people are expecting that score not only when they turn into your news that night but they want it as soon as the game's over how much pressure has been added how much workload has been added to you to keep up the social media part or is that separate from what you do it's not separate it's a team effort we actually double up on Friday nights we have uh, generally we have one web producer that works at any given time during the day but during football season uh, I'm afforded two which has been nice so right. I'll have two web producers and they're scouring Twitter and we've got great fans and viewers that'll help us out with scores so that has been great again some of the smaller schools traditionally has been really hard to get score updates right, from right. Twitter and Facebook but more more so Twitter has really helped this out so it's always it's slowly becoming more of a, uh, a known commodity like, hey if I tag this and, and Tommy sees it uh, you know I'm gonna maybe get a mention on, on Twitter right. on an air so it's nice. right and then it's got to drive you nuts when you have a, a week where say Fresno State has moved yes. to a Friday night and suddenly your resources become stretched even more yeah it, it, are those horrifying nights for you or do, does the energy go up even more um it depends when fresno state's doing well it makes the decision to <laughs> a little easier when Derek carr for instance was here and the last two years have been a little bit leaner yeah. so um 
we do about six to eight games a week, maybe nine if, if we have uh, some extra resources. But if it's a Fresno State game, we get knocked down to about five. Yeah. So we do have to divvy up some time. And so it gets a little bit tough, but we uh, we make do with it. I'll send Chris to, to Fresno State, and that's kind of his baby to take care of. Right. And then I kind of do, do the rest of else. it. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to wrap up here yeah. pretty quick, but I want you to go over. If people are interested in keeping up with high school, college, football, sports, what they, obviously we know we can turn to your channel, sure. yeah. but, but where else can we find you? Yeah, obviously ABC30 or on Twitter is the easiest one, at Tommy Tran TV. So, yeah. Is there an app? We do have an app. Yeah, we have an app, the ABC30 app. If you go to Google or um, iTunes, we'll be right there. Okay. Well, listen, I can't thank you enough, and I'm glad I caught you before all the craziness <laughs> started. So good luck this year. So appreciate the time. Appreciate you having me. Right oh, no, thank you. All right. We will be back in just a moment. a vacation for an hour at Toledo's Mexican Restaurant. Come and enjoy our open-air patio and relax with a perfect margarita tucked away in the Mission Village Shopping Center on Shaw and Fresno. Toledo's Mexican Restaurant. Comida autentica. Well, I'm going to the beach where I belong. Warm sand, cool surf, and hot new rides. Shockwave, the crazy spinning wave of fun. And Typhoon, launching you six stories above the boardwalk, upside down. The admission-free Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk is open daily. At the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, in the warm California sun. Boardwalk! Ginza's Finer Dining is a culinary pleasure for fans of Asian cuisine. Our menu features interesting textures, aromatic flavors, combined with beautiful presentations wrapped all together in a sophisticated atmosphere to make your visit here a memorable experience. Ginza, it is a masterful mix of Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Thai, sushi, and hibachi grill-style dishes. We hope you enjoy eating at Ginza as much as we enjoy serving you. Hello, welcome to Alberto's restaurant. Come on in. At Alberto's you will have a new experience at great Italian dining. We have fantastic pasta dishes like fettuccine alfredo and eggplant parmesan. And you have to come in and try the chicken marsala and the calamari con limone. I take great pride in everything I prepare and I know you will love it. And what's dinner without a little wine? At Alberto's we have a great selection of wines to go with your dinner. Alberto's Restaurante in Pacific Road. Come and see us tonight. Salud. Salud. Well, welcome back. It's time to get caught up on some local news. Now, one of the stories that's always gotten a lot of reaction when I was writing for the Fresno Bee had to do with local radio ratings. It wasn't that listeners would get upset when I would report that their favorite radio station had dropped in the ratings. It was always those in the charge of the radio station who would call. For those of you who have never read a ratings listing from uh, Arbitron, it is a complicated list of times and demographics. I've always said that an Arbitron list offers so many ways of reading the numbers. It is possible to make any radio station in the market number one. So what I had to do was find a middle ground, and that meant quoting the numbers of those 12 years old and older who listen between 6 a.m. and midnight during the week. Simple enough. That's a broad stroke when you consider that Arbitron's looking at more than 791,000 listeners in the Fresno market. But if every demographic was addressed, there would be no time for, me to, uh, for you to listen to the radio. So that's the format I'm going to use on this show. The spring ratings that cover from March through June have just been released by Arbitron. And then that 12 plus category, the top rated station in Fresno is KBOSS with a 6.9 rating. The station that you probably better know as B95 has a format that includes hip hop and R&B. KBOSS has shown consistent strength in the last few ratings books with a 6.1, 6.5, and 5.8 over the previous three Arbitron rating periods. Number two is Y101 at 6.4, K97 at 5.4, Kiss Country's fourth, and KMJ comes in at fifth with 4.3. Now, the fact that KMJ's fifth is really interesting. You know, it wasn't that long ago that the general thinking was that traditional radio was in trouble, especially radio stations with music formats. The thinking was that so many ways for people to listen to music available, the traditional radio station would be phased out. The only format expected to survive was talk radio because the discussions, well, they tended to focus on local issues. And there was a time when KMJ dominated the local radio racing, 
ratings. A fifth place finish is good, but doesn't reflect the previous thinking that music formats were in trouble. It's nice to see that local radio has not gone gently into that good night. Just in case, now, just in case you're wondering, the rest of the local top 10 includes KLBN, uh, the Fox, the Wolf had a 3.5, KLZ, and KMGV at 3.0. Next, it's, I want to give you a reminder that on July 2nd, KAL started airing ION on its digital subchannel 7.3. So uh, ION includes network shows such as Saving Hope, Blue Bloods, Burn Notice, Criminal Minds, Psych, and White Collar. Uh, ION replaces the Cozy Network on KIL, but ION is still available in this market. It has now moved to channel 51.3, which is on Comcast channel 378. That's why you need that pencil paper. The lineup includes Baywatch, Adam-12, The Avengers, ATM, and Bionic Woman. And finally, I was happy to see that Clovis East graduate Chris Colfer was in town recently as part of his book tour. Now, since Glee ended, Colfer has been, uh, he's been writing a series of books that take a sort of a new look at fairy t the fairy tale world uh, through a series called The uh, Land of Stories. The latest book is Worlds Collide. Now, Colford always told me that he felt uncomfortable doing a book tour or book signing in his hometown because he didn't want it to come across as he was sort of flaunting the fame he'd gotten from being on Glee. I can tell you that after writing about Colford for years, he was one of the most level-headed young men I have ever met. I'm glad he finally decided to, to make the stop in Clovis. Uh, as always, those of you who watch TV via an antenna should uh, run a scan. Uh, it's my last reminder of the day. Uh, that way you pick it up all the local channels. All right, that's all the news I have as far as local TV and radio is going on. I'll be back in a moment with a, a final thought. Hello, welcome to Alberto's restaurant. Come on in. At Alberto's, you will have a new experience at great Italian dining. We have fantastic pasta dishes like fettuccine alfredo and eggplant parmesan. And you have to come in and try the chicken marsala and the calamari con limone. I take great pride in everything I prepare, and I know you will love it. And what's dinner without a little wine? At Alberto's, we have a great selection of wines to go with your dinner. Alberto's Restaurante in Pacific Road. Come and see us tonight. Salud! Salud! This summer, the choice is easy. Pick fun at Wild Water Adventure Park. There are so many ways to splash away the summer in our 52 cool shady acres, full of rides, slides, and awesome adventures for everyone. You can score with every ride on Kaleida Slide. It's part water slide, part video game, and totally cool. So come run the rapids, ride the slides, or play all day in Adventure Bay. Whatever you choose, Wild Water Adventures has a full day of fun for everyone. The coolest choice this summer is Wild Water Adventure Park in Clovis. Richard's a Valley Dining Tradition, serving great food since 1969, including Richard's famous deluxe dinner for two. Multiple choices at a fixed price. Great tasting steaks or seafood. Richard's deluxe dinner for two, a favorite. It even includes wine. A Central Valley Dining Tradition on Historic Belmont off 180. Follow our neon sign to Richard's, where you'll find something special and something good right on the menu. Well, that's this week's show. I'd like to thank Tommy Tran for joining me. I'd also like to thank you for tuning in. Your support is greatly, greatly appreciated. You've already sh uh, found the show, but what I need for you to do is to continue to spread the word that this is being broadcast on KGMC Channel 43.5, also known as Antenna TV. Those who have cable can watch the program on Comcast Channel 378. Now, the first thing the show will be on Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. I say the first three because the time and dates of additional playings of this show uh, will be listed at my, my website of www.rickbentleytvbeat.com. It's very important to hear from you. To contact me, just send an email to rb at rickbentleytvbeat.com. So until next week, that's it. That's all the TV and radio news I have for you. I hope you have some fun TV watching this week, and I'll be back uh, with more news for you later on. Thanks.